Welcome! This video will guide you through the disassembly, repair, and reassembly of the Viking Pump Universal Seal Heavy Duty Internal Gear Pump with a behind the rotor mechanical seal. This series includes the following Viking Pump models. As always, consult the applicable technical service manual for important safety information before you begin. A copy of the latest revision can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, follow the correct safety procedures. It is critical to know what liquid the pump has been handling and the precautions necessary to safely handle the liquid. Always read and follow the safety warnings in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. Copies of the latest service manuals can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. You may require the following tools for disassembly and repair. SAE wrenches, Allen wrenches, and a soft-headed hammer. A complete listing of tools and part numbers can be found in the service manual. For newer pumps, seal kit and repair kit part numbers can be found on a hang tag on the pump. For older pumps, or if the tag has been removed, contact your local authorized Viking Pump distributor with the model and serial number of the pump to obtain these part kit numbers. The pumps covered in this video are universal seal pumps with behind the rotor component mechanical seals. The seal kit includes the mechanical seal, gaskets, bearings, bearing collars, lip seals, and associated hardware. The repair kit includes a replacement idler and bushing assembly, head and pin assembly, bracket bushing, and associated hardware. Take care when opening the kit so as not to cut or damage these repair parts. Keep the pump and work area as clean as possible. Drain the pump of any residual liquid. Turning the shaft will help expel any liquid trapped in the gear teeth. Mark the head and casing before disassembly to ensure proper reassembly. Remove the head cap screws or nuts. On larger pumps, jack screws should be used to back the head away from the casing. Remove the head by tilting it backward to prevent the idler from falling off the idler pin. Insert a brass bar or a piece of hardwood in the port opening and between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Bend up a tang of the lock washer and with a spanner wrench, Remove the lock nut and lock washer from the shaft. Loosen two set screws in the face of the bearing housing and remove the bearing housing assembly from the bracket. On larger pumps, remove a pair of half round rings from under the inner spacer collar from the shaft. Note that H and HL size pumps do not have these rings. The rotor and shaft assembly can now be removed from the pump. A soft-headed hammer may be needed to tap on the end of the shaft for removal. Take care in removing the rotor and shaft to avoid damaging the bracket bushing. Loosen two radial set screws in the flange of the bearing housing and with a spanner wrench, remove the outer end cap with lip seal and the outer bearing spacer collar. Remove the outer bearing spacer, then remove the lip seal from the outer end cap. Remove the inner bearing spacer collar, the bearing, and the lip seal from the bearing housing. Remove the rotary chamber of the mechanical seal from the rotor shaft and the seal seat from the bracket. Remove the socket head cap screws connecting the relief valve to the head. Then remove the relief valve gasket. Inspect the pump parts for wear, particularly the critical parts such as the idler pin, idler bushing, bracket bushing, idler gear, rotor and casing. Check parts for nicks, burrs and excessive wear and replace any worn components. Clean the rotor hub and casing bore. Make sure both are free of dirt and grit. Install the lip seal into the bracket. Install the bushing into the bracket. Bushings with lubrication grooves should be installed with the groove at the top or 12 o'clock position. Carbon graphite bushings require extreme care to avoid breaking the bushing during installation. For carbon graphite bushings, use a lubricant and make certain that the bushing is started straight. 
Use a press to completely install the bushing in one continuous motion. Starting and stopping will crack the bushing. Make sure slots in the face of the bushing are towards the rotor end of the bracket. Lubricate the outer diameter of the seal seat gasket with oil. Press the seal seat into the bore until the unlapped face bottoms into the bore. If the seal is anti-rotation pins, make sure they're aligned with the slots in the bracket bushing. Place the tapered installation sleeve on the shaft. Install the washer and spring. Coat the tapered sleeve and the inside of the rotary member with a generous quantity of light oil. Start the rotary member on the shaft and over the tapered sleeve. Move the rotary member all the way on the rotor shaft until it is against the rotor hub. If the seal uses set screws to secure the seal to the shaft, tighten the set screws once the seal is in place. If using a PTFE seal equipped with holding clips, remove them to release the springs after the seal is installed on the shaft. Coat the rotor shaft in the face of the mechanical seal with light oil. Start the end of the shaft in the bracket bushing, turning from right to left, slowly pushing the rotor in the casing. Then remove the installation sleeve. Install the relief valve gasket onto the head. Use a gasket sealant if available. Attach the relief valve onto the head. Install and tighten the socket head cap screws. Coat the idler pin with light oil and replace the idler and the bushing onto the idler pin in the head. Use a 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch head gasket on the pump head and use a gasket sealant if available. Reinstall the head and idler gear, ensuring the proper location of the pin and the crescent. The idler pin, which is offset inside the pump head, must be positioned toward and equally distant from the port connections to allow proper flow of liquid through the pump. Tighten the head cap screws evenly. Install the lip seal in the bearing housing with the lip toward the end of the shaft. Install the lip seal in the bearing housing end cap with the lip toward the end of the shaft. Pack the bearing with grease and push the bearing into the bearing housing. Install two nylon spacers. Next, install the outer bearing spacer collar in the outer end cap and turn the end cap into the bearing housing until it's tight against the bearing. Tighten the two radial set screws to lock the end cap in position. Start two set screws in the outer flange of the bearing housing. H and HL sized pump bearing spacer collars are not recessed and do not have the half round rings. Slide the inner spacer collar over the shaft with the recessed end facing the rotor. 
Place a pair of half round rings on the shaft and slide the inner bearing spacer collar over the half round rings to lock them into place. Turn the bearing housing into the bracket. Put the lock washer and lock nut on the shaft. Insert a length of hardwood or brass through the port opening between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Tighten the lock nut to 50 to 70 foot-pounds of torque for size H and HL pumps or 100 to 130 foot-pounds of torque for larger pump sizes. Bend one tang of the lock washer into the slot of the lock nut. If the tang doesn't line up with the slot, tighten the lock nut until it does. Failure to tighten the lock nut or engage the lock washer tang could result in early bearing failure and cause damage to the pump. Back off the bearing housing counterclockwise until the rotor shaft can be turned by hand with a slight noticeable drag. This point is known as the zero end clearance. Mark the position of the bearing housing with respect to the casing. Use the measurement from the table in the technical service manual to make a second mark on the bracket, left of the first mark at the distance indicated. In this example, we require three thousandths of an inch end clearance on a model HL4124A pump, so the mark is made three quarters of an inch away. Rotate the thrust bearing assembly counterclockwise until the bearing housing mark aligns with this new bracket mark. Tighten the two self-locking set screws in the outboard face of the bearing housing with equal force against the bracket. The pump end clearance is now set and locked. Be sure the shaft can rotate freely. If not, back off an additional length and on outside diameter and check the rotation again. Your Viking pump behind the rotor mechanical steel internal gear pump is fully repaired and is ready to be put back into service. Lubricate all the grease fittings with multi-purpose grease NLGI number 2 and follow the suggested maintenance located in the appropriate TSM for a long, trouble-free service life. If you have any questions regarding this or other Viking Pump products, please contact your local authorized pump distributor or visit us on the web at vikingpump.com. Thank you.